Design doesn't have to be complicated, it can be simple and easy to use, but what are the principles of good design? Today, you will find out. So this book is a game changer in the UX world and is a must read. Today we'll be talking about the book The Design of Everyday Things by Donald Norman, which is for anyone interested in understanding the principles of good design, improving the usability and the user experience of products and system in various domains. But before we get started talking about the design of everyday things, I just want to say if you want more videos, more book reviews and more conversations about design topics, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another video like this one. So we begin this book by establishing what good design is, which is a lot harder to notice than poor design. That's because good design should be invisible, whereas bad design streams us with problems. The psychology of everyday things. This chapter begins by emphasizing the importance of good design, particularly in discoverability and understanding. Human-centered design prioritizes human needs and behaviors and effective communication, especially in challenging situations. Discoverability is facilitated through psychological concepts like affordance, signifier, constraints, mapping, and feedback. And most importantly, the concept model of system. So affordance. Affordance are the possible interactions between people and the environment. Some affordance are perceivable, others are not. Perceived affordance often acts as a signifier, but they can be ambiguous. Signifier signals things, particularly what actions are possible and how they should be done. Signifiers must be perceivable, otherwise they fail to function. Natural mapping takes advantage of spatial analogies, leading to immediate understanding. A good conceptual models are the key to understanding enjoyable products and good communication is the key to good conceptual models. Chapter 2 the psychology of everyday action. In this chapter, we talk about the gulf of evaluation, which refers to the effort required to interpret a device physical state, and it assesses if the expectations are met. To bridge the gulf of expectation, signifier constraints, mapping, and conceptual models are utilized. The gulf of evaluation bridges through feedback and the conceptual model. So the design of our products and services must follow this philosophy. Do not blame people when they fail to use your product properly. Take people's difficulties as a signifier where the products can be improved. Eliminate all error messages from electronic and computer system. Instead, provide help and guidance. Make it possible to correct problem directly from help and guidance messages. Allow people to continue with their task. Don't impend progress. Help make it smooth and continuous. Six, never make people start over. We call it human error. No, it is design error. The seven stage model of action cycle provides a checklist for design consideration. Each stage requires specific strategies and carries for potential mishaps. So the summaries of these questions are, what do I want to accomplish? What are the alternative action sequences? What action can I do now? How do I do it? What happened? What does it mean? Is it okay? Have I accomplished my goal? Chapter three, knowledge in the head and in the world. So chapter three talks about the knowledge in the head and in the world and how they interact with the product. Good design should consider users' existent knowledge and minimize the cognitive load. By externalizing knowledge through the visible cues and instructions, designers can create intuitive and user-friendly products. Relying solely on the internal knowledge can lead to errors, emphasizing the need for design that supports users' mental models. Overall, this chapter emphasizes the significance of aligning the design with users, knowledge to enhance the usability and improve the user experience. Knowing what to do, constraints, discoverability and feedback. Constraints act as a limitation or restriction on the possible actions users can take with a product guiding them towards the correct interactions and preventing error. Discoverability refers to the ease with which users can determine what actions are possible and how to perform them. It is crucial for designers to provide a clear and intuitive cues that enable users to understand the available options. Feedback plays a vital role in informing users about the system state and the outcomes of their actions. Timely and informative feedback enhances the user's confidence and helps them make informed decisions. By incorporating effective constraints, discoverability and feedback into design, products can become more user-friendly, intuitive and enjoyable to interact with. 
my highlight and quote from this section is the following. Affordance signify a mapping and constraints can simplify our encounters with everyday objects. Failure to proper deploy these cues can lead to problems. Human error? No, just bad design. This chapter argues that most errors are blamed on humans are actually a result of bad design rather than the individual incompetence. Human behavior is influenced by the design of the product or the system they are interacting with. When errors occur, it is crucial to examine the design flaws that contribute to those errors rather than blaming the user. So when an error happens, we should determine why. And the perfect way to do this is the why test. Ask yourself why, 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 but why, and you will find your answers. By understanding human cognition and behavior, designers can create products that align with the user's capabilities and minimize the likelihood of errors. So designers need to take responsibilities for design flaws and work towards creating products that are intuitive, user-friendly, and support human capabilities. Ultimately, reducing the occurrence of human ever. Design thinking. I've talked about design thinking in my other videos that you can find right here and you can watch after this video. But what stood out to me is this quote. One of my rules in consulting is simple. Never solve the problem I am asked to solve. Why such a counter unitive rule? Because in variable, the problem I am asked to solve is not the real fundamental root of the problem. It is usually a symptom. So that is my favorite quote from this section the design in the world of business. Good design requires stepping back from the competitive pressures and ensuring that the entire product is consistent, coherent, and understandable. Good design increases the customer satisfaction, loyalty, and ultimately the business success. A great example is used from Jeff Bezos' approach of customer obsessed, which basically means focusing on the customer, not the competition or the traditional marketing. The focus here is simple. Conclusion. In conclusion, these chapters emphasize the importance of good design in creating the user-friendly products that align with the human needs and behaviors. Discoverability through concepts like affordance and signifiers plays a crucial role in facilitating the interaction the chapters also highlight the relationship between human error and design flaws, emphasizing the need for designers to take responsibilities and create intuitive products by considering users' mental models, minimizing cognitive load and incorporating effective constraints and feedback. Designers can enhance usability and improve the user experience. Ultimately, prioritizing the user in design leads to a increased customer satisfaction and business success. This is only the top of the iceberg and there is so much information in this book and I really recommend for you to read and I will leave a link for this book in the bio and if you have enjoyed this UX book you may also enjoy this other UX book don't make me think